Sometimes the best stories are based on real life experiences. Singer, songwriter, and now producer Billy Trudell joins us live to talk about his work. He was with Elton John for six years and other recording artists like Sting and Billy Joel and Rod Stewart. Um, he just touched so many people in the music industry. Uh, clearly, welcome Billy. That's quite a list of, of artists that you've worked with. I mean, all of those are Hall of Fame performers. Mm. And then the phone stops ringing. The phone stopped ringing. I yes. can relate to that as an actor, of course, of a certain age. Uh, you get to a point and the younger generation comes in and then suddenly people forget who you are. Right. Is that something, is that kind of what exactly what happens. What happens and, and, uh, it, it happens more and more in, in the music industry and, and as musicians get older, there's no 401ks, there, there's nothing that's taking care of them and, and you're only as good as your next job. And, and so that's what, what happens and if that job's not there, well, then you're in trouble. So you toured all over the world, you've been with some of the biggest of the big names and all of this changes. So it seemed like you had kind of this apparition or you really had to dig deep into your core and find just something new to come from yeah, what you're it, doing. W w the good thing of it was that it, when, you, when you hit the ground, when you hit the bottom, it, it gives you the opportunity to look back up and, and, and sort of have a do-over, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> and so for me, it was, it was an awakening and it was it, 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 it was it, it my eyes were wide open I was able to to really um, see a well, new I'm, perspective of I'm things. curious I'm curious how that happens one day you are touring with Elton John Rod Stewart again Hall of Fame performers how soon does it happen I mean is it gradual and then before you know it you're on your la you know the last dollar in your bank account or, or, uh, or is it sudden, it just boom, and, well, it's, and it, you're out? It, it, it's, it's gradual, you know, I mean, you're, you're doing things, I mean, but if you're, if you're doing the wrong things, you know, I was, I was starting many businesses after I stopped touring with Elton John. My last show was Madison Square Gardens with him. We did a, a concert called One Night Only. It was, that became a DVD, it was a special on, on CBS, it, it was a, multi-million selling record you know and we had you know this it was a very big deal and I guess you know it, it was good to go out with a bang uh, you can't but, go out <laughs> yeah. much bigger big than Madison Square Garden yeah. with Elton John right. yeah. but um, when that stopped then I had started a, a company called Billy Trudell Music and I started doing TV commercials and then the SAG went on strike and and that that whole thing crumbled within a year it was over and the industry likes to kind of control now how you produce your music and you wanted to get that back and you woke up in the middle of the night literally you popped out of bed and you had this kind of thing going on in your a revelation your head. yeah I had a dream and and the dream was very prominent telling me to do a certain style of music and I got up that morning at six o'clock in the morning and I uh, Opened up my phone and I got a I, I got this piano app out and I started going da 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 da. And this is the this is the song the, the, yeah. the, the tune that was just in your head. I don't I don't head. play piano I don't do anything but I was I was figuring it out you know with this little piano key. And that created what song? Uh, a song called Gone. I wrote it in 20 minutes. By the time I finished my coffee, the song was done. At 9:30 that morning, I went into the studio and and started laying this thing down and, and putting it together. Now, the guy that I wrote with, uh, Steve Epstein, he's my writing partner, he thought I was nuts because he, he was, he's like, you know, this is great. He goes, I love this. And he goes, but he goes, this style of music should have been recorded like in 1959. And he, well, go ahead. Well, so I'm just thinking, so then you, you move a project forward, a documentary forward, from that song or another song or yeah. Well, what happened was uh, uh, when I when I when I went into the writing process of making this record, and I started to think about my my own life, and I I thought you know I should start documenting everything that I've done in my life because I have done a lot of things, and through that process I started to unravel a lot of the problems within the music industry, and started to see all the lost souls, all these musicians, these guys I know that are like some of the best musicians in the business, 
that are struggling. They have no jobs. There's no work. You know, and and part of it is because the industry changed. Uh, you know, going into a recording studio, where we, there was this camaraderie of all of us getting together into a studio and, and making music, that doesn't exist anymore. It's right. all producer with a computer. Right. Yes, right. everything right. is home studio, Pro Tools, you how know, did How digital. did this get you to uh, working with the homeless? Well, what happened was I was down, I was filming this, this segment of my documentary, I was down on Broadway and looking at all the old theater district. And if you know any of the history of the theater district, from 1910 to 1940, it was called the entertainment capital of the world. It made more money than anywhere like else Skid in the world. Row, right? And now it's 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 a bunch of rundown buildings and storage units. Like they have all these storage units. If you go into the theaters, they store all this stuff for all the swap meets and and you know. So as artists, you are really a, a paycheck away, or, or so many individuals are just so close to being and homeless, and then. You add on top of it, say your friend Jeff Jones, um, where I know that you produce a great concert for him. Um, he has MS and Parkinson's. I mean, just right. awful degenerative diseases that will not reverse. Like you but get he's sick. he's he's sick, and yeah. so even the best of us with with jobs can only sustain something like that for so long. Tell us a little bit about the um, the concert that you yeah, had for last him week and how we, this all ties together. Last week we did a, a concert called Jammin' for Jones. Uh, I got a phone call from a friend of mine, Holly Dexter, um, who's a great background singer. Uh, her and her husband, Troy Dexter, he's a guitar player, uh, they were in touch with Stephen Bishop. And Stephen Bishop I've, I've worked with uh, a few times in the past. and. And they wanted to do this this benefit concert, and I didn't know a lot about it, and I had and not known Jeff until last week when I first met him. I knew about him. I knew who he was as a musician, but I've never met him. And so we put together this concert like on a whim, and it was something that, that um, Stephen had been putting together uh, with uh, his production team that he'd been putting together for like months. And so we put this great lineup of musicians to Who go in and do this. Who were some of the musicians? This. Shaka Khan was oh, there. Oh, I love Shaka and Khan. You and you were singing. And so you had musical royalty had there. Howard Jones. Yeah, Howard we Jones. Had, you had, uh, now, is this, on, is this on tape, the, the concert? Yes. They also are doing a documentary on, on Jeff's life and, and, and this concert. Uh, it also can be seen on YouTube right now. You'll see some of the segments. I got up and sang one song. I sang mm -hmm. one of Jeff's songs. And then I... We put together this great background section of, of uh, singers to to help out. But one everybody, day I'm everybody be in, in the, the band was like a it's my, star. It's my dream wow. to be in the background. I'll be one of your backup singers. Check yes. that out on, uh, <laughs> on on YouTube. I'm going to check that out right away. And and we are going to put more information on our website, uh, CrownCityNews.com. And so I'm really glad that you were able to be here with us. And and hopefully you'll be able to come back in and give us some more information as yeah. the documentary is yeah, wrapping it's, up. It's Billy Billy. T in the Lost Souls. You can see one song on YouTube right now I posted. That's great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you Thanks so much. Thank you, Thank you so you much for, for having here. me. Yeah. <laughs> Coming up, Loa tackles uh, shoulder and spine health. Yeah. How to keep your face from sagging. And our saggy face thing. <laughs> I'm a little nervous I'm about that. To see what that is. <laughs> so next in the CCN Sunrise Fit and Beautiful segment, that'll be Loa. <laughs> 